scene 1408. Don't forget to like and subscribe. The movie begins with Jennifer Hills, a novelist who decides to rent a secluded cabin in the deep south to focus on her writing. Along the way, she stops at a shop to pick up the keys to the cabin. Earl, the cabin owner, gives her the keys and provides directions. He mentions that the cabin is hard to reach but offers a beautiful view and tranquility. As Jennifer travels through the countryside, she becomes increasingly disoriented. She decides to stop at a gas station to refuel, where she encounters three workers named Andy, Stanley, and Johnny. They try to flirt with her, but she remains focused on her purpose. Jennifer shares her destination and asks for specific directions. Johnny, attracted to her, makes a clumsy move that results in him spilling a bucket of fluid, much to the amusement of Andy and Stanley. Jennifer drives away, leaving Johnny feeling embarrassed. Eventually, Jennifer arrives at the cabin, which appears eerie but will be her home for the next few months. She unpacks her belongings and immediately begins writing. The next day, Jennifer relaxes by the lake and hears noises coming from the woods, but she dismisses them as crows. She continues writing on the cabin porch until she hears sounds emanating from the shed. Intrigued, she investigates and discovers various tools and canisters with the word poison, but she remains unfazed. Jennifer returns to the cabin and, shortly after, accidentally spills wine on her shirt, prompting her to wash it at the sink. Unbeknownst to her, someone secretly records her while she is partially undressed. The following morning, she goes for a run and encounters an abandoned house, which piques her curiosity, leading her to explore it. Despite her initial excitement, Jennifer didn't find anything of interest inside the abandoned house. She shrugged off the disappointment and continued with her day. Returning to her cabin, she looked forward to a relaxing bath, only to be greeted by brown, murky water running from the sink and a clogged toilet. Frustrated, she decided to call a plumber named Matthew to address the plumbing issues. However, her bad luck persisted as she accidentally dropped her phone into the toilet, leaving her no choice but to dry it with a hairdryer. Matthew, the plumber with a speech impediment and intellectual disability, arrived to fix the bathroom. Grateful for his assistance, Jennifer impulsively gave him a quick peck on the cheek to express her appreciation. Unbeknownst to her, Matthew had his own circle of friends, Andy, Stanley, and Johnny, who often spent time together in the woods. They were engaged in the cruel act of killing fish for sport, with Stanley capturing their exploits on video. As fate would have it, Matthew joined his friends in the woods after completing the bathroom repairs. Eager to share his unexpected encounter with Jennifer, Matthew informed Johnny about the kiss he had received but Johnny remained skeptical. It was Stanley who confirmed the authenticity of the story, stating that Matthew was incapable of lying. Disturbingly, Stanley proceeded to show his friends the video he had recorded of Jennifer the previous night, provoking Johnny's anger. In a troubling turn of events, Johnny began discussing how girls like Jennifer deserve to have a good time, implying sinister intentions. Jennifer, still unsettled by the strange sounds she had been hearing around her house, grew increasingly anxious. Her unease heightened when she discovered a lifeless bird on her doorstep, hearing a thud against her door prior to the grim discovery. After cautiously searching the perimeter of her cabin, Jennifer found no signs of anyone lurking outside. However, her sense of security was shattered when she returned to her laptop and discovered a selfie featuring Johnny and his friends. The sight filled her with a sense of dread, and her anxiety escalated when Johnny and his companions abruptly entered the room. And he took pleasure in taunting her, while Stanley filmed the disturbing encounter with his handy cam. Reluctantly, Johnny pulled Matthew along, even though it was clear that Matthew disapproved of their actions. Jennifer, consumed by fear, desperately tried to convince them that her boyfriend would be arriving soon. Unfortunately, her words fell on deaf ears as the men intensified their harassment. They cruelly mocked her writing and callously tossed lit matches in her direction. Johnny coerced her into drinking, exploiting her vulnerability, while Matthew cowered in a corner, lacking the courage to defend her. The situation took a chilling turn when Johnny demanded that she show him her teeth. Initially perplexed, Jennifer complied when he menacingly brandished a baseball bat. To her horror, Johnny then produced a gun and forcefully pressed it against her trembling lips. As the boys callously laughed, and he approached Jennifer, unaware of the determination that had welled up within her. Seizing the opportunity, she grabbed a bottle and smashed it against Andy's knee, momentarily incapacitating him. Acting swiftly, she reached for a pepper spray and unleashed its contents on Stanley, providing her with a precious moment to escape. With adrenaline coursing through her veins, she sprinted out of the cabin and sought refuge in the surrounding woods. As Jennifer raced through the dense foliage, she stumbled upon the town's sheriff and Earl, the owner of the cabin. Finally, she found allies in her time of need, offering her a glimmer of hope and safety from the harrowing ordeal she had just endured.
Overwhelmed by tears, Jennifer poured out the horrifying details of the recent assault she had endured, desperately pleading for help. The sheriff, realizing the gravity of the situation, asked Earl to return to town while he offered his support by accompanying Jennifer back to the cabin to investigate. As they arrived, their hopes of finding evidence were dashed when they discovered the cabin empty. Determined to uncover the truth, the sheriff began searching the premises. However, the situation took a dark and unexpected turn when the sheriff's attention was drawn to a weed joint and a broken alcohol bottle. Instantly, his demeanor changed, and he started casting judgment on Jennifer, accusing her of fabricating her account of the incident. He defended the men involved, asserting that he had known them since they were children and insinuating that she had no right to make false accusations against them. Disturbingly, the sheriff then proceeded to conduct a body search on Jennifer. It soon became evident that this invasive act was nothing more than an excuse to inappropriately touch her. Their appalling encounter was interrupted by the return of Johnny and his friends. In a horrifying turn of events, the sheriff joined the men in assaulting Jennifer while the others looked on. Her attempts to fight back were met with Johnny restraining her in a chokehold, while he forcibly removed her pants. Meanwhile, Matthew, against his own will, was coerced into undressing by the men. Initially refusing, fear eventually compelled him to comply. With Jennifer overpowered and held down by the men, Matthew was forced by Johnny to violate her against her will, while Stanley heartlessly filmed the grotesque scene. To further exacerbate the horror, the sheriff callously answered a phone call from his own daughter during the midst of the assault, displaying a chilling disregard for the unspeakable act taking place. Following the ordeal, Matthew succumbed to his overwhelming emotions, vomiting uncontrollably. In a state of utter devastation, Jennifer summoned what remained of her strength and seized an opportunity to flee into the woods. Jennifer wanders deeper into the woods, encountering the group again. They subject her to further torment. And he forcefully drowns her in a puddle while the sheriff violates her against her pleas. The men take turns, filmed by Stanley. Jennifer awakens, covered in dirt, and escapes towards a bridge over a river. The men follow, with the sheriff prepared to shoot. Jennifer unexpectedly dives into the water, disappearing. They search but find no trace of her. Panicked, the sheriff orders the boys to dispose of Jennifer's belongings and burn the tape. He returns home, showing no remorse. The next day, he lies to the cabin owner, claiming Jennifer left due to alcohol problems. Days pass, and the boys continue their lives, unaffected. Matthew grapples with guilt, even envisioning Jennifer's ghost in the woods. A month elapses, and the sheriff receives a call from Earl, the cabin owner, mentioning Barbara's inquiries about Jennifer's disappearance. Meanwhile, Stanley rushes to his friends in a panic, revealing his stolen handy cam that contains incriminating footage. Johnny violently assaults Stanley, but Andy manages to calm him down. Later that evening, Johnny, alone and watching TV, hears a thud at his door. He discovers a dead bird, followed by another thud. Fueled by anger, he grabs his gun, storming outside only to find Jennifer's sandal on his doorstep. Shooting wildly, he searches the shifting bushes but finds nothing. The next day, the sheriff returns home to discover a mailed tape containing the horrifying evidence of Jennifer's assault. This triggers a downward spiral, propelling him towards Johnny's location. Enraged, the sheriff confronts the trio, particularly targeting Stanley, suspecting a malicious prank. Johnny speculates Matthew's involvement due to his absence. Later that day, the sheriff accompanies Earl on a hunting trip. Seizing an opportunity, he abruptly shoots and kills Earl, viewing him as a potential loose end as he witnessed Jennifer's return to the cabin. Meanwhile, Matthew awakens in the abandoned cabin, consumed by guilt, and unexpectedly encounters Jennifer, seated on the couch. However, his remorse falls short as she retaliates, choking him with a rope. On the same day, Stanley and Andy venture into the woods in search of Matthew, following faint music to an abandoned house that Jennifer discovered earlier. Evidence of habitation suggests someone has been living there. While Stanley explores alone, he unexpectedly encounters Jennifer and unknowingly steps into a bear trap, screaming in agony. Andy rushes to help but is swiftly incapacitated by Jennifer's blow to the head. Later, Stanley regains consciousness, bound to a tree stump. Jennifer films him, torturing him with a dead rat and piercing hooks through his eyelids, securing them to the stump. She spreads fish entrails on his face, attracting crows that peck at him. Over time, the birds devour his eyeballs, causing him to bleed to death. Meanwhile, Andy awakens to find himself restrained over a bathtub. The water begins to rise as Jennifer enters, ignoring his pleas. She forcefully drowns him, adding an acidic substance to intensify the torment. Jennifer proceeds to remove a plank beneath Andy, forcing him to bear his own weight above the acidic water, risking drowning. Exhausted, 
he repeatedly sinks into the corrosive depths until his demise. Continuing her pursuit of vengeance, Jennifer confronts Johnny at the gas station, rendering him unconscious with a speed wrench. Johnny awakens, stripped and bound, with a horse bit in his mouth. Jennifer yanks the bridle, extracting his teeth, forcing him to confront his actions and instilling terror that causes him to lose control. Removing the bridle, Jennifer reveals a gun, placing it in his mouth. Despite his arrogance, his laughter subsides when she produces shears, severing his genitals and placing them in his mouth. Johnny's life ends in a gruesome scene of bloodshed. Meanwhile, in another part of town, the sheriff receives a call from his daughter, eagerly sharing news of a visit from her new teacher. Jennifer surprises the sheriff when she turns out to be his daughter's teacher, causing him to panic. Concerned for his family's safety, the sheriff rushes home only to discover his daughter has left to spend time with Jennifer. Frantically searching, he arrives at an empty playground, still unable to find them. Jennifer cunningly ambushes him as he returns to his car. Upon awakening, the sheriff finds himself confined within the cabin, a shotgun forcefully inserted. Jennifer taunts him, highlighting his hypocrisy and tolerating violence against women. Torturing him further, she pushes the barrel deeper, inflicting agony. Jennifer then secures a string to the trigger, revealing an unconscious Matthew across the room. She attaches the other end of the string to Matthew's wrist, creating a precarious setup where any movement could pull the trigger. As the sheriff begs for his life, Jennifer exits the scene. Moments later, Matthew regains consciousness, unwittingly triggering the shotgun as he stirs. The fatal shot claims the lives of both the sheriff and Matthew, bringing the movie to a chilling conclusion.